you doing? Uh, sorry I've been quiet for a little while. One of my players, um, the mad cartographer, went on holiday. So that was one of my Curse of Strahd players gone. He's also the DM in my Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign, so there was no rhyme video to upload either. And I was looking after his dog while he was away. Lovely big boxer dog. So I thought, well, I'll use both two nights to get a load of foundry videos done. But the dog followed me from room to room and he'd fall asleep on the floor. He snored so loud that I tried to do some videos and we just had this really loud snoring over. So I've not had a chance until now. So sorry I've been a bit quiet. Um, Today's video is talking about Monk's Enhanced Journal. So Monk's a module developer who's only just kind of come to my attention. I've got a few of their modules now, so expect future videos on that. This is one that I think really improves how journal entries work in Foundry. It's not, I think you can share this with your players, but I think it gives them a little bit too much. So I like to just keep this as a DM tool for myself. My Foundry world is very journal heavy. As you can see, um, I'm someone who likes to make a journal entry hidden in each room, as you've seen before, so that as I'm moving around, as my players are going through, I can refer to these journal entries. I pick the one map, it'll take forever to load. My, my skill on these videos is uploading slow maps. Um, you'll see I've got journal entries hidden here. That's handy because as a DM, particularly in a module like Curse of Strahd, where there's so much community sourced, you know, optional content, what I don't want to do is be running a campaign in Foundry and then jumping off to a OneNote and to a Google document and to this guy's Reddit mega thread and to this guy's YouTube video or home brewery articles. I like to spend my time to pull what I want from all of them and put them in my journal entries in game um, so I have access to all of that. So a quick preview of what the module looks like there. When you have enhanced journal installed, if you right click on the journal icon, it will open up. And as you can see, it is very different. Um, so what does this module add? You'll see on the right hand side, we have your full journal entry list. So we can go through and find them all, even if we've moved off to another tab. We can mark entries as favorites. There's a search option. So if I were to go, for example, I know I've made one called um, table rulings. You've seen this article before in my GM, screen, my GM screen module where I have one for table rulings. If my players decide on something, um, we save it down there. Um, but I can go in and say, where's my table rulings document? Here we go. This is a log of the table rulings we've made for reference and precedence. There we go. I can click favorite. And now this journal entry will forever be held at the top so I can get to it quickly. I can open multiple tabs as well. So let's say, you know, we're in the werewolf den. Let's go to the cave mouth article. If I know that at any time whilst we're in here, something can happen, an event can trigger, um, depending on if they, I don't know, I'm just pulling things out of thin air here. If the players say a certain word, if there's a magic word that will cause a boss to appear anywhere in the cave. If they say that, I don't want to have to go scrolling off. So I could go and find, um, let me open an additional tab. So I click open additional tab, and then I could click on North Cave. Let's see if that's an article I want to keep referring to. No matter what I'm clicking around in, I've got North Cave open there as well, and I can jump into it any time, and I can close it when it's not needed. Um, You'll see if I close all my tabs, and I now have no tabs available, my favorites are still there, and I also have a set of recently viewed articles that I can click, and I can see what I've been looking at. We've got options up here to show the journal entry to the player. Edit the description, just put it into edit mode. Convert, so I'll come back to convert in a second. Um, Extract to a new entry, you can pull parts out of this to make a new entry, and jump to pin. If there is a pin on the map for this particular journal entry, say for a room, if I were to go back to um, Cave Mouth, if I jump to pin, it moves to where on the map that article is, which I find very useful. I like to do that. Um, We've got, you'll see the search for articles and the search within articles as well. So I could search for all of the articles that contain anything about Strahd, but also within the entry I'm in, I can also search for 
any term I want and it highlights it. Quite handy with larger articles. And you'll see we can attach a picture to our article as well. That's how it handles old entries. The journal entries you'll already have in your world when you first install this module, this is how they'll look. However, going forward, and this is what the convert tool is used for, if I wanted to make a new journal entry from within here, I'm going to call it test, but you'll see instead of just journal entry like we used to have, you now have slideshow, picture, person, place, quest, encounter, and organization. Now I don't like all of these. I mean, what? Well, do you know what? It's not that I dislike them. Quest, for example. Quest works well, but I'd rather use Forian's quest log, personally. However, if your players are very into their journals and your players haven't really taken to Forian's quest log, they find it a bit too much hard work and kind of out the way and they have to go looking for it, you might find this more useful. If I choose to go and create, I'm not going to make every one of these, you can check these out yourself, but if I make person, so I will call this Mr. Test just so I can find it later. When I create a new journal entry, so this would exist for someone who you know is not going to need a token. Maybe this is somebody who's just being referred to, like a figure who died in the past, who you know full well is not getting resurrected, is not making a Chekhov's gun style appearance in your campaign as some undead boss. It's just someone who's going to be referred to. You can set this up as needed. Um, we can go in and edit the document. What is their role? Um, historic figure. Location. They lived in... Zanakand. Old Zanakand. Description, you know, Ray, we could we could fill all of this in. And then we could, you know, notes for yourself and what we sounded like. You can fill it in. You can put any extra notes in. Again, this will, these will only be visible to you. We can choose a picture if we want to add one in. Search on your on your system for where you're going to add a picture in. Very, very self-explanatory. And then you've got that as a reference then maybe your players will find a historical book about this person and through reading it you can just go, yep, yeah, share to players, there we go, they've now got that article. You haven't revealed, or maybe if you're really committed to setting things up, you like, you might like to make a little biography for your NPCs that your players have access to that doesn't spoil the contents of their stat block and their actor. You know, you might want to have an article about Strahd that your players have built up other information that doesn't contain his HP and his AC and all the spells he has. Um, so that can be very, very useful. If I were to go in and go create entry, I'll just show you, um, I'll show you two more of these. Place, I quite like. Oh, I didn't give it a name. Silly mate. Place farm, well, test farms. I like the place ones because I've looked into, um, in the past I've looked into different modules to handle how you can have place locations on a map. I mean, you'll have seen from my video on uh, Valaki and making an interactive town map, which I think is my most viewed video, which is a shame as it was terrible, terrible recording quality. Um, I've gone through some really pain in the backside methods of, rec of recording locations on a map. For my next campaign, um, I think I'll be running Curse of Strahd again after I finish this one and also doing something else based in another demiplane. Um, I'll be making very heavy use of this for those map pins. So I can go in, I could add a location and I could say this is the town of Resed. Clearly Final Fantasy tens in my head today. Uh, government, I'll just say council size 500. Right about test farms. Um, put any notes in, put any art in, and again, because if we have a world map or a continent map and we've added this journal entry on, we can then click to zoom and center on that at any time. You could also add sub-locations in, you know, for yourself in here, you could drag other location pins in, so you've got a list of sub-locations of that town. For example, if you had a map pin for Valaki and you had separate scenes or articles set up for the blue water in and Vacta House and things like that. You could drag them in here so you as a DM from the map pin have a quick reference to jump to sub locations. Last one I'll show you in here. Not sure how I feel about this, but it's a it's a cool feature. I just don't know if I'd use it. If I go test encounter, I can have an encounter set up in here 
where I could drag in the monsters that are going to appear in this encounter, the items, and any DCs of any sort of abilities in here. So I could go in and just know at some point, if the players go here, they're going to have an ambush. Now, me personally, just my DM style, I'd have a battle map ready, and I'd have the wolves already on, hidden, and, you know, as I explained to the players from Theatre of the Mind, and here's what happens, you get attacked by wolves, we'd then jump to a combat map. But you might not like that. You might be someone who does a lot in Theatre of the Mind. If you do a lot of things in Theatre of the Mind, you might not have battle maps ready, so you might not... It's easy for me. If I make a map and I put all the enemies on, I don't have to think about organising that combat until the players get there. If you have a scenario where a combat map isn't what you want, this can be really useful. I can go in, add my dire wolves on. Um, I'm not going to have any item. Do you know what? I'll put an item on just so there is one in this combat. What sort of item do we have? Um, belt of fire giant strength. I've now got that in there and I can save this encounter and I can refer to it and I know what's going on. What I like about this as well is if you drag an item from this screen onto a player, it will place it in their inventory as well. So it is a quite handy way of allocating loot. I know there's other modules out there that will let you make you know, loot parcels. I, I've never particularly liked them. I normally end up making like a folder category myself, like you know, Amber Temple loot, Curse of Stroud spoilers in the next 30 seconds. Um, in like the treasury room, I made a pile for each sort of item, uh, for each treasure item. This would be an easier way of doing that. Yeah, it's it's up to you. I do really like this module. I think it falls very much into the category of something that your players won't see much benefit from session to session, but for you as a DM, it will be very, very convenient. I definitely plan to go through more of Monk's modules. I've really been impressed by what I've seen from them in the last few weeks um, since all their modules came to my attention. <laughs> Let me know what you think, if you think you'd use this, um, if there's another one another module you're using instead to organize your journal entries and um, organizing my foundry is something that I'm always working on let me know in the comments if you like this what you'd like to see in the future any of the modules you think I should cover and I'll see you soon